presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to John in Orlando. Hey, John, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom, good afternoon to you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I want to thank you, first of all, before I ask you about the talk, uh, you and Tim Ward and all the gang at TFNN, I had a really, really good year after the October call you guys made, my 401k is up 72%. Congratulations, man. A uh, couple of things I made with Coinbase and other stocks that I made, and I've had a good, good year. And we appreciate you growling and prowling with us, man. That's a beautiful thing. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What is going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show right here on TFNN. What's going on? It's about to be a long weekend, everyone. That is fantastic. I didn't want to make any trades today at all. I was kind of looking at stuff earlier and just doing my general stuff on it. Um, I don't even know why I'm looking at form factor right now. We'll definitely talk about them. But, uh, geez, I hope you guys are going to have a good Thursday. I got a dog sit for some people, so that's going to be fun. But uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> the composite trading off about 0.55% right now, 19,068. It's just low volume today, right? I mean, I'm even looking at Archer a little bit because everyone is, it's just, it's gotten to the meme level, which, you know, is not, I, you know, I would say it's not always a terrible. Actually, wow, that did some good volume today. This morning was not. It just didn't. It didn't have anything rocking for it. Um, the Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.29% at 44,730. You have the E Mini off about 0.35% at 6,017. With that SPY trading off 0.28%, right under 600. Of course, we made a high yesterday of 601.33. We have the dollar somewhat strong, and interestingly enough. Kind of with headlines as well of things not going super well in Europe. I and mean, it looks like the French economy might be in some deep, deep problems. Budget crises and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to keep it, you know, there's some stuff I want to look at today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Qubit. I'm going to take a look at Red Cat. Talk a little bit about Seals and stuff like that. Or Lays, rather. But, you know, I mean, we have a long weekend here. I don't like placing trades right before holidays. And Friday's a spooky day. Half days are spooky days to try to get out of stuff like that and do anything at all. Now, you have the dollar trading off about 0.74% per, uh, right there. Trading at 106.09. You have the crude oil contract trading flat right now at 68.72. Gold contract actually moving you know, somewhat substantially today up 0.62% at 2,662. You have copper trading up 0.74% at $4.14 on the futures contract. And you have silver off, uh, man, it's getting battered compared to the other ones. Uh, off about 0.95% at 30.54. Mike, if you're listening, I'm sorry, brother. But it's going to come back. Uh, Russell, doing okay today. Again, relatively strong compared to the other indices. Uh, trading up 0.11% right now at 2,435. Let's see what we got rocking. Disney up. Bang. Yeah. Up 1.64% at 117.34. Lucid doing not too much. Steel Dynamics not too much. Nothing doing anything really at all. Uh, some of the big news right now is uh, consumer prices. Yeah, you know, kind of unchanged at least, right? And, you know, and I, I do think with, with these tariffs that are going to come out, I, they are, tariffs are inflationary. They, they just are, right? You can get around it maybe in some ways with doing things to like China and everything and bolster stuff here at home, but there's this idea that we're going to start tariffing Mexico. Now, I personally believe that's not really for economic reasons more than it is we want Mexico to do certain things or allow us to do certain things, right? There's some conversation of sending operators into Mexico in order to disrupt cartel movements. We have discussed doing that in the past, and Mexico has responded very negatively to it. It makes sense. It's a sovereign country. You don't want other people's kind of troops operating in there. Um, but, you know, I, I think the presence of this conversation, be like, hey, we're going to tariff you guys, you know, is, is really a form of negotiation to get, 
more political ends met uh, than it is economic ends met. So we'll see what happens. Now, I think her name's Scheinbaum, the president of Mexico. Uh, she said that, uh, let me just check on that. Let me see here. Yeah, Scheinbaum, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so anyway, she said that she would actually implement retaliatory tariffs. Yeah, Claudia Scheinbaum would uh, implement retaliatory tariffs. I, that's a bad move for Mexico. I mean, in a major way. Now, it does hurt us as well. A lot of our stuff is produced, mainly vehicles are produced in Mexico. Uh, this can be a massive issue. That is certainly uh, very inflationary, right? We didn't make much progress in some areas of inflation. I don't think that the Fed is under any you know, requirement to lower interest rates. You, the, the argument I think Trump has, right, which he wants to do this growth kind of concept, and you're definitely going to get growth with inflation uh, to some certain extent. But he wants to lower rates too and everything. Um, you know, we stick at this kind of like 2% increase, and that's not, you know, delivered from Mount Sinai or anything like that. And I wonder if we do get some kind of discussion going forward, is, you know, is this what we, you know, should be aiming for? Is it okay if we're running something like 3% inflation, you know, blah, blah, blah. And what do we need to do, um, you know, to kind of accept that and let it run? But we'll see what happens with it. And then, you know, talking a little bit uh, about what I was saying with, um, excuse me, with France is, uh, yeah, they have a collapse, uh, potential collapse in government-wise amid uh, budget crises, which is kind of insane as well. Yes, the budget proposals are crucial to addressing the national deficit through significant tax and hikes and cuts. Man, it's currently stalled after being rejected by the lower house. Invocation of Article 49.3 could force its adoption without a vote, but that would uh, that would be a major, major problem for France. So we'll see what happens with that there. Um, you have some bad news with Dell coming out as well. Uh, give me a second to pull all this up. Let's go here. We'll go through like the earnings and stuff like that, but... I mean, this is a massive gap down. We're off 12.21% right now. And it's this idea, and yeah, anyone could have really seen this coming. But saying that 2025 will be a good year for them, but investment in AI is not going to be linear. And, and that's true. And I think we actually are hitting like legit tangible roadblocks, mainly in kind of the manifestation of what we were talking about a few weeks ago was we keep giving this data to AI models. They're not doing any better with it. The data, we're running out of, good quality data. And so, you know, these are roadblocks we have to get through, right? I mean, we were talking about how Jensen Wong was saying they can't add in more transistors onto these chips. And so now they need to improve software. I mean, so this now extends the horizon to where you get, you know, I, I don't know if the goal of these companies is really AGI or anything like that, but at least making the inference worthwhile enough, uh, you know, to dump a, a ton of money into it and then warrants the investment that's going on right now. Uh, so that's this is a tough spot, really. And I think you have Nvidia coming off a little bit as well. Obviously, not so much uh, as Dell. So y'all, one point four nine percent. Let's see SMCI. Oh, it's up two point two four percent. Of course. Yeah, folks, there, there will be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in a fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. know you were still there. It's almost Thanksgiving. Come on now. Dell off 12.10%. Uh, maybe not as good for guidance, right? About 100 million below that. Uh, this is the COO said that AI is a robust opportunity. We know that. Okay. Interest in the portfolio is all time high. Yeah, no signs of slowing down. The business will not be linear, he says, especially as cover, uh, customers navigate the underlying silicon roadmap that is changing. Server revenues fell 9% in the third quarter from the prior period. Top of a broader slump in the market. Yeah, they have personal computer issues just in general. Uh, the midpoint of the company's guidance range for annual revenue fell to 96.1 billion from 97 billion. We provide a formal fiscal 2026 outlook for investors early next year, which I think will be good. Demand for the Blackwell is huge. There's a massive backlog uh, for their Blackwell designs. Saw Q3 a shift and a pretty rapid shift of orders moving towards our Blackwell design. Blackwell design makes up a significant portion of its backlog. You know, are people waiting for that transition to happen so you get this kind of just stalling out, right, of any consumption of, of the other server racks that they have? I, you know, that's one way to look at this, and it could be the chance. I mean, this could be potential as well. Like, this is just an insane to sell off and it's a buy the dip type deal, right? I mean, I think also partly that's kind of challenges that concept a little bit is that I think this has been moving up, um, honestly, not that significantly, to be honest, but it had been moving up around this time uh, because of SMCI, right? The idea that SMCI might just evaporate entirely um, and then the only people you're left with are like Dell and Hewitt Packard. Um, th this stock has just, I think image problems. I mean, we're at 41 billion market cap for the thing. Not a horrible PE, but um, yeah. You know, I'll take a look this weekend, honestly, and see if there's anything at least fundamentally interesting with it that could, you know, warrant it moving up more. But at 41 billion, 41.6 billion market cap, you know, it's huge. But what's SMCI is at? And keep in mind, SMCI has it says that at 20.5 billion market cap, and they have a superior product as well. And this is more accessible, which does matter to retail investors, 100%, the price. The SMCI right now is up 2.11% at 35.15. It did get new um, auditors, so we'll see what happens with that. I don't know. It's just freaky to me. Um, I don't know what the different the new auditors, auditors are going to do differently. Ernst & Young is you know, well-known and stuff like that. And I don't think they would just say something uh, like what they said. Oh, sorry, just got a stock update. Um, without it actually, you know, 
being meaningful. Let's take a look real quick at ARM. This thing is like 8% today. Nice. This is that one I'm looking at. Think like, ah, oh, you know, could, could we run something like high? They're doing basically AI for IoT. This is ARM, ARBB. They're a Malaysian company. Um, not a lot of optics on these guys, even slightly. This is a low viz situation, which makes it risky, you know? Uh, they did sign a deal with Asus, which is pretty positive, gives them some more exposure into the market in general. Uh, trading at 832 right now. Uh, it seems like it's, what's the average volume on this? 50 day average, 11 million. Today, 163,000. What is this? No, I don't know, freaky, freaky thing. But this is what I'm like, could probably see putting in. You know, the, the AI with IoT is a kind of bizarre thing. I don't like IoT in general, uh, but it's no doubt it's very dominant. Right, but uh, it's kind of interesting. 8.32% to the upside, trading at 49 cents. Pre-profit, huh, how about that? I'll take a look, kind of on that same realm since we're talking about IoT, let's take a look at Lays. This is Seals Q. Now I gotta give props to Dan in the Den for putting me onto these guys, but this is interesting. Off 7.38% today. I think the big thing initially that they had been doing, or not the big thing, but what, one of the, Parts of Seals Q that is somewhat interesting is that they have their own currency, right? But this currency is being used to transfer uh, basically assets being data uh, between IOTs. And if you remember me discussing this back in like June of this year, maybe even like of 2023, I don't know where the time goes, but it was saying one of the best applications in my mind of like e coins or just blockchain coins in general is that they can be used with in businesses, right, to shuffle around assets. We don't need to use USD if, if even in partnerships, right? Like if I'm making a deal with someone in Brazil or, or Russia or whatever, we can have our own established currency that just is basically more liquid, right? And it seems like they're doing something similar to that um, with IoT. Um, the IoT devices can kind of transfer data uh, between it and using this kind of token, which is nice, but again, that's voodoo, you know? Um, that's not something you invest in just because it, it does that, at least for me, that's not something I do. Even though I love the concept and I think the concept is legit, it's just kind of voodoo right now. What they did that I think is really fascinating, if I can pull this up quickly, are these post-quantum chips, okay? So we were discussing, again, a little while ago, this is, this honestly is pretty kind of crazy. Let me see if I can get this up. PITSM. This is from the NSA about trusted platform module use cases. Talking a little, this is just general trusted platform modules, right? That's like basically hardware that does like encryption, holds the keys and stuff like that in your devices. All devices have TPMs, uh, but it, it seals Q has developed a TPM and ASIC. Yeah. Risk five based, which is kind of weird, but cool in and of itself. That's open source, which is probably why they're using it. And I think these guys are Swiss, so that kind of makes sense. But these are these are post quantum chips, right? So you're seeing this kind of build up with Amazon out of nowhere. Amazon drops the bracket thing, right? Uh, we know that in June of this year, NIST introduced new kind of standards, right? Using Kyber and dilithium algorithms for encryption, uh, without that running on computers you know, you're gonna get cracked by anyone who has access uh, to a quantum computer. And that's gonna really be nation state actors or, you know, forbid some like malicious corporation that doesn't really happen. Um, but uh, this is kind of neat. And I'm trying to find other companies that do this. And I couldn't really find anyone that has the exposure that SEALS has or that's even public at all. So they're doing the QS7000. So let's look. Quality and functional testing of quantum resistant hardware platforms, QS7001, on track for 2025 production and delivery of its quantum resistant secure chips portfolio, including the, the QS7001 open platform and QVault TPM. An open platform is, is that's, they're calling it that because of the risk five. Um, and then the QVault TPM platform with uh, SEALS 5 plus certification that supports Kyber and dilithium algorithms. The global TPM market, they're saying, projects to reach 5.97 billion, and uh, the ASIC is 35.5 billion. And ASICs, I think, will become a lot more uh, prevalent going forward besides just general CPUs and stuff like that.
But you also had NIST come out in the beginning of this month saying that everyone needs to start switching. Let me see here. Post quantum NIST. Start switching. Yeah. Remember something. Yep. So they had August 13th. The post quantum cryptography standards are here. And then they started suggesting people start using these kind of TPMs, these post quantum TPMs. That is like if you believe in quantum computing at any capacity, which obviously AWS does because they're dumping a bunch of money into it and having people pay consultants to come and talk to them about it and giving free access to it if you're a cloud user. You need something that's going to be able to protect against quantum. And that's going to be what Steel's Q is doing, which is very fascinating. Yeah, kind of a tough stock right now, no doubt, but I like it. And if it works off, I mean, this stock will skyrocket if their stuff works. It's right there, folks. Be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup, you're watching the Tom O'Brien Show right here on TFNN. Talking about Seals Q Corp before it went to the break. And my uh, 
Wise Key and Seal's Q Corp correspondent is telling me they have servers deep in the Alps. So do with that information what you will, because that's it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Um, all right, let's let's keep moving on here. Um, I guess I can kind of talk about Red Cat right now. Let me see here. These guys, this is some freaky stuff. Now I ran a really, really, really kind of primary financial analysis, fundamental analysis. It's not really that good, honestly, to be honest. I was doing this morning while I was doing some other work as well. You have an enterprise value of this company of like 623 billion. Debt, cash to debt is actually pretty good. Uh, they have almost 1300% more cash than debt, at least standing right now. Your market cap, yeah, 630 billion. Excuse me, I'm saying billion, I mean million. It's, I'm ready for the weekend, no doubt. Um, now, this is probably higher since trading at 917, man. It, this is crazy, you have less volume today. What does this stock do? Why are you talking about this, Jacob? Because those don't sound very you know, impressive in any capacity. You had 58.83% growth over the last three months, over the last quarter, compared to the quarter prior. But it costs them, yeah, 107% gain in, in, in the cost of goods sold. So that's kind of tough, right? So our cat, what these guys are doing is making drones, okay? And that doesn't really interest me in and of itself in any capacity. And they're personal drones as well. But I just made a deal with the U.S. government, particularly the Army. Give me one second to get the exacts on it. So they had a production selection for the U.S. Army Short Range Reconnaissance Program. And if you kind of think about what we've seen over the past few years with really Russia and Ukraine, is the it is a platform-heavy war, but not in the way Russia would have hoped it to be, right? Russia is a very platform, America is a platform-heavy military, right? Ukrainians, insurgencies, resistance groups usually are not platform-heavy in any capacity. But they've started to use these drones. I'm sure you guys have seen videos of it. You've heard at least about it. That a lot of this war is being fought by people carrying these makeshift drones and dropping, you know, makeshift payloads, right? I mean, it could even be like a grenade and they figured out how to rig it that when they drop the hand, the, the pin gets uh, taken out, grenades activated, and it does it. And this has been a, a massive issue uh, for the Russians in a major way. So much so that they've started deploying uh, jammers out there. They give uh, even like duck rifles, like your old Brownings for trap shooting. That is being deployed in, in every unit. This is a major problem, at least for the Russians, but it's just more so a major evolution in how warfare operates, right? So you have companies, you know, such as Anduril, okay? Anduril has understood this and they've developed uh, drones that can basically snipe other drones out of the sky. They are reusable, pretty cool. They um, pattern off of like Peregrine Falcons which like right on, you know, <laughs> that's pretty sweet. And our cat, they actually initially were beat out by a company called Skydio or Skidio. I'm assuming it's Skydio because they're drones um, for this. But it, it, it turned out that the Skydio drones were, were kind of vulnerable to being jammed by the Russians and it didn't work in the Ukrainians started using Chinese made drones, which is not what always you really want because you don't know what's in that tech, right? And we've spoken about, you know, issues with, with foreign tech being connected up to certain networks, having any kind of, um, you know, data gathering and stuff like that. So what's interesting about Arcat, this is their Teal drone, right? Or they're from Teal. This is a company they bought and kind of absorbed into it. The thing doesn't communicate with GPS for quite a while, right? So you're not getting issues necessarily with jamming. It maps out the area it's in. It can move around uh, within that memory, uh, which is very interesting. Again, that makes them not super susceptible to that kind of jamming. Uh, and obviously, it can be deployed by a single individual. That is really neat. Uh, I think we're going to build this out not only for the military, right? Because you might get some reduction in... Conflict, I, I think, with the next administration coming in. Uh, now, I say that only based on what happened in the past time he was he was president. So that obviously can change, and it's been four years, right? But, um, you know, we are still building out this border in, in a major way. That Anduril kind of has a, a hold on that, but Arcat's drones have been purchased uh, for use at the border. It does 
intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, ISR kind of deals with this, and they can be um, they can be weaponized. So this is very interesting kind of stock for me. Again, you know, they have good cash. They're not really levered out anyways. The cost of goods sold has increased exponentially for not uh, really an equal increase in revenues, um, which is fine, I guess, uh, to some certain extent, as long as they can cut that down uh, to a certain level. Uh, very interesting. I'm going to be kind of looking at this more over the break and everything to just make a decision of what I want to do with the company. Of course, this is a massive run up, right? And you can get pullbacks at this level. I think this is what this was again. Again, this resistance today was kind of interesting, but it is on low volume. And of course, it's holiday time and everything like that. Um, you have a high right now of uh, 962. We're trading under that high right now at $9.11, trading up 9.08% uh, for the day, uh, which is pretty nuts because I saw it earlier and I was like, hey, I don't want to do this, but it would have been good. And Friday, I just get nervous that people resituate their kind of portfolios. On the same kind of realm, now this gets into the, the meme game quite a bit, is, is Archer <laughs> Aviation, okay? These guys are doing the EV tolls, right? So uh, these are going to be air taxis. Of course, we're talking about Joby, and Joby got FAA approval in some capacity. Um, and so you ask, you know, Joby actually has better financials in, in a major way. What are we at? Up 1.39% today, where Archer is up. 13.9%. That's because Archer has that curb appeal to it uh, within the meme realm, which kind of is unfortunate because you always want to think about companies in a more fundamental sense, but you can't argue with stuff like this, right? And if Archer gets this kind of exposure, and we, we saw when Archer got exposure initially, they started getting funding from, I think Abu Dhabi funds them right now, um, just as uh, I believe Dubai funds Joby. And so, you know, we might be really getting, especially with FAA approval in some certain areas, I think, I mean, did we make like an all-time high today, at least on the year we did? No. No. All-time high is $17 of this thing. Soup came down quite a bit, actually. Trading at 8 bucks. This is at least in Joby. But um, it seems like people are dumping money into doing these air taxis again, which is super fascinating. And the Gulf Arab states have this kind of, you know, proclivity to invest in, in technologies that, that aren't really looked at favorably around the world and they just have so much money and they, to some certain extent, at least can get it operational. Not necessarily working, but it's kind of cool. Archer, this is moving up majorly high on contracting volume. Today, actually, the volume is not so bad. So this may be people trying to get in and, and hold it, actually, you know? A lot of bag holders in this area, though, very important uh, to keep in mind. Folks, stay right there, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Uh, give me one second here. I want to check this out. This is some news from the FCC. Remember when I was doing that kind of like ridiculous sketch on low Earth orbit? that Starlink does. Well, this is actually kind of cool. And we had the hurricane come through and I was like, why don't we all just communicate via cellular, or excuse me, via satellite. Um, there's obviously some issues with that, but with low Earth orbit, uh, it might not be as bad. T-Mobile right now, Timus, trading up 0.6% at $246.40. The FCC just approved the Starlink plan for cellular phone service uh, with some limits. So this is gonna be Leo, cell service, which is pretty cool. Uh, the approval lets Starlink and T-Mobile move ahead with their plan to provide satellite services to phones in cellular dead spots. SpaceX is authorized to use the 1910 to 1915 megahertz Earth to space and 99095 uh, bands for, uh, yeah, for lease agreement with T-Mobile. Through its lease arrangement, T-Mobile, SpaceX's Gen 2 Starlink satellites can enable consumers outside of the range of T-Mobile's network to be connected while using their existing devices. It makes me want to like almost move into T-Mobile in a major way. It was cool that Apple allowed satellite calling uh, during the hurricanes in certain areas and flooding as well. Uh, when I was in Cleveland this past weekend, I was with one of my buddies. He's a he's a tech guy, and he had actually bought a Starlink. And so you know we're out there in the freezing sleet. I think we had drank a little bit or something, and then we set up this we set up this satellite uh, dish, and it was pretty cool. I mean, it took a little bit of time to like update. That is one of the things that actually is cool about Starlink is they have constant service updates. So I mean, this thing's around to say, clearly it is, right? Um, but it, it was a really neat process. The, the entire thing was actually pretty cool. Excuse anything else. Grand Starlink's request to provide cell services outside of the United States. That's good for Starlink as well. Obviously we can't really get much exposure to them, um, but I, this is very neat. And that's T-Mobile. Now, it doesn't really do much for T-Mobile in any major way, right? Uh, but it is very cool for Starlink. And I wonder if there'll ever be a time where, you know, Starlink goes uh, kind of public in that sense. On that same way, we're talking about Starlink having these constant updates. It can be kind of slow, but it is still very neat. We can talk in the realm of smart gadgets just, just a tad um, because I think it's kind of interesting. And something for you to watch out for as we're approaching, you know, Black Friday and Christmas and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of the times when you get these smart gadgets, they, you know, <laughs> what can end up happening is that service for them just kind of stops, right? This becomes an issue mainly, uh, in my opinion, for security uh, purposes, but it can also just be bad, right? And, and you end up wasting your money because the thing doesn't do anything. So the FTC is ruling that this might actually be illegal for them, which is kind of interesting. So it released its statement after examining 184 smart products across 64 uh, product categories. These are sound bars, doorbells, smartphones, home appliances, so on and so forth. Among the devices researched, the majority of did not disclose the connected device support duration or the end date on their web page. This is something to be cognizant of because you can buy this thing and then eventually it just becomes bricked and doesn't do anything properly. 
Uh, this 11.4% of the devices examined shared the software support updates, which is very fascinating. So keep that in mind when you're buying something and, and, and think about what you're doing when you're buying smart devices in any major way. Uh, I want to talk a tad about JP Morgan uh, and their analysis that they had as well for the coming year. I think with everything I was talking about earlier with inflation, I get you know we've had such absurd growth in the market this year, right? And even the year prior. And it's kind of hard to see that continue to go on, especially if we have to, you know, God forbid, raise interest rates um, if anything inflationary comes our way. And it's sad as well because, you know, with things like Rocket Labs and Qubit and all this kind of different stuff um, and Ionic and everything, I mean, you're not going to see those like 40, like all the time or as frequently those 40% gains on earnings, which is a shame, right? I mean, we're getting this almost like a melt-up point to some certain capacity. Uh, so JBM is actually setting their price target for 2025 at 6,500. We're just tagging 600 right now, at least in this spot. We're under right now at 598.60. Uh, and so that's a you know pretty extreme contraction, I would say, at least from what we've been doing prior, which is uh, somewhat unfortunate. You have some movement as well by um, Warren Buffett in into cash again, which is kind of interesting. Um, you know, I could, I can definitely see. Maybe not in the next quarter, but you know, I get concerned about these these big companies, Nvidia, in particular. If something goes wrong with them for a quarter, right, that I think can really have major melting effects in the market because they're using it as kind of a bellwether of of U.S. economic growth, right? I mean, if you're, you're buying Nvidia, you're scaling up or you're preparing to scale up at least. You're dumping a lot of money into it. I have just a fear that what NVIDIA is trying to do with their Blackwell GPUs is not going to be as seamless, I think, as people say it will be, right? This could create a lot of backlogs. It can really slow down the process here. And what I mean is that them casting the GPUs together, right, like on the die, is supposed to get away from having to get stuff on and off circuit constantly, um, but it's overheating racks. I think that's a problem. I could see them being like, you know, we, we can't get this stuff any better right now. It's heating up. We're not sure why. We have to, in some capacity, make it so these things are yielded together, right? Just makes them more efficient um, to maintain any kind of, like, growth edge. And uh, I think they're going to run into issues with it. I think they already have run into issues with it. I think there's murmurings of it. But I, I can see a realm where things get, get tough. And I, I think Wong's discussion about you know, not being able to fit any more transistors on it. I mean, what he means by that is that the hardware is not going to get any better at where they're at right now, you know, bar some massive, you know, kind of revolution um, in chip design. They're not going to they're not going to get any better hardware wise. Right. You know, of course, you could go to something else like into photonics or, you know, the TFLN, what Qubit's doing and stuff like that. Um, but it's almost like he's soft prepping. I, I took it this way. Soft prepping in a sense of being like, we're just going to work on the software. We'll make the software better. We'll make that run more efficiently. That's weird because it's saying we've hit a physical, a legit physical limit of how much better we can make this thing. And so now we got to go into the internal. Um, I don't know. That's kind of my opinion on it. And I wonder if you get some bad forward guidance from NVIDIA, like some real bad, because this is not going to be linear in any capacity. And everyone's reaction to Dell saying that, you know, is kind of nuts in and of itself. Um, but you're going to run into these roadblocks. I mean, we're pushing these like <laughs> insane limits of, of physics right now. And uh, it becomes an issue. And so an 8% like tough, I, I don't have, you know, any target percent increase in the SPY for next year. Uh, but whatever push we're doing, which we could easily run. I mean, this, 60, this 600 level is absolutely resistance right now, right? We tried to hit it or we hit it briefly on November 11th, came right back down rejected that gap up and then right back up to 600. And now we're facing resistance there again. So who knows, I mean, do we test, right? Do we consolidate around here? Do we test this kind of gap up again? I, I would say no, right? Kind of low volume. I mean, this was a high volume move to the downside, uh, but then consolidated on, on, you know, no insane volume and, and came right back up. I just, I think that fundamentals drives this thing next year. So when your market gets this hiccup, right? And we don't have any new technology that we can focus on you know maybe quantum comes in and that can kind of take the light and we get a major run up with quantum next year which would be cool and i could totally see that being viable um, but as things are now totally not linear growth into next year and i think we're already seeing again whispers of 
some ceilings being hit in this realm. So folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment. We're gonna get you sent home. <laughs> Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv welcome back everyone this is jacob shoot do the tom o'brien show we got a short segment here um give me a second to get my bearings okay yes that's what i wanted to look up intel Look, they got the money. It was less than anticipated. Qualcomm doesn't want to buy them anymore. Off 2%, trading at 23.59. Uh, this is just bad holding right now. I don't like it. We're going to keep following along with that. Uh, let's talk about some weird news uh, for the day. First, I'm bullish on uh, the Borg invasion because Elon Musk is pushing brain implant production at a 14.7 million Texas facility. <laughs> So uh, looking for manufacturing technicians and microfabrication specialists. This is a job posting, guys, uh, to help boost production. The job listings popped up on Neuralink's website recently, and hiring events have also been held in their California and Texas facilities this month. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Apparently the thing works, and they're paying wages <laughs> at $28.85 an hour. Whoa. Oh, it's $22 an hour for manufacturing technicians for brain implants. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, hiring push is part of the broader effort. 30 job openings on his career page. Yeah, well, that's pretty nuts, huh? Uh, and then we can move on a little bit to uh, 
is the, the city of Hoboken, um, where you move when you want to say you live in Manhattan but don't want to pay Manhattan prices, uh, is getting ransomware right now. Let's see if it's still going on. This is what I'm talking about, guys. When I say this kind of stuff, like it's not like a joke like grandma lost her password because some scammer called her. Um, I mean, this becomes a huge issue. Let me see here. Yeah, nothing's loading at all. Okay, now it's loading again. But see, this is a massive problem. <laughs> Crazy. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Get out of here. Go have some fun this Thanksgiving. We're going to be back Monday morning with Tommy O'Brien, 9 a.m. for the morning market kickoff. Again, remember, the side market is open for a half day on Friday, but we will not be in. Take care. Email me if you have any questions. We'll see you then.